Hello. Uh, welcome to episode 154 of Adventures in Pop. Um, I promised last time round uh, that we would talk about the subject today of what to do when you hit a creative brick wall and you have, effectively, you have some kind of writer's block and you're just unable to come up with something new that that you like or 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 maybe you're having trouble coming up with anything new at all um first of all just before i get into all of that a couple of things i want to just say first if you're enjoying this series why not subscribe and um you know press the bell and all those things come along for the rides because um i just i just love having you around and and actually you are exactly the kind of person that i want as a subscriber and you know i i don't accept everybody you know it's very, very, um, there's tough competition to be one of my subscribers. And if you already are, then, well, congratulations. Um, and on that subject, I'm approaching 6,000 subscribers. I, at the beginning of this year, I think I had 1,800. So that is a, a really, you know, significant increase. And I am humbled and I'm on my knees um, or, 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 well, I was on my knees, and I could be on my knees again a bit later, but let's keep going. All right, let's talk about writer's block. Um, and the reason we're going to talk about this is because, really, for the last couple of months, I have written next to nothing. Um, and this is really unusual for me, because one thing that I think people have often commented about uh, my kind of modus operandi over the last six or seven years is that you know whatever anyone thinks of the quality of the output and on that we can have a separate debate on a different day so this is not a comment on the quality of the output what but one thing has been for certain is that there doesn't seem to have been any problem in just coming up with stuff and 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 that's how it's always felt for seven years um, I, I've been able to sort of knock out a track or a song, I suppose, once every week or two, um, just consistently. What I would say, though, and I'm just repeating this point from just a moment ago, is it doesn't mean that all the songs were good. And, and certainly if I look back, there are phases where I wrote plenty of songs and none of them were good. And other times when there was a kind of a stream of good songs and what I tend to find for myself is that there'll be a slow period um this is more than a slow period now but there'll be a slow period and then there'll be a bit of a rush of songs and there might be three or four or five songs just literally coming out one after another it's it's great it feels really good and being in a creative slump doesn't feel really good. So the question is, um, what do I do about that? To what extent, right now, um, should I or am I panicking? Um, and the answer is, I'm not really panicking, but it's it's uncomfortable because I, I, I feel much more like me when I'm in mid, you know, creative flow. I've written something... I'm trying to work out whether I like the thing I've written. I mean, that's much more normal. Much more normal practice is I've just written something and I'm trying to work out if it's actually any good. And quite often it's not. And I don't mind that because at least there's something. Last seven, eight weeks has been really nothing. So what I'd like to do is give you my personal handy hints of how to deal with this situation because I'm sure I'm not alone I'm sure every writer and it doesn't matter whether you're a songwriter or a novel writer or or actually in pretty much any any part of the kind of creative arts where you are faced with um you know effectively a blank page and you're you want to fill it with something original that comes from you okay so in the case of music, I have got eight guidelines, eight handy hints. And these are all things that that are absolutely true for me and work for me. And I'm holding on to them and hoping that they will still work for me. So here are the eight handy hints when you hit that creative brick wall and you have writer's block. 
Okay, in no particular order. One, I've talked about this before, but really useful is I quite often will go to my great big loop cloud sample bank and um, just work out which instrument I want to listen to, whether I want to, do I want to hear some sample drums, do I want to hear some sample guitar, but just find some samples that might inspire you, that might form the basis of a song that you write with that sample in mind, or using the sample as a central hook, or it just it just gives you the idea of a melody, and then the melody gives you the idea of some words, and off you, you're off and running. But using samples, um, in other words, you're you're basically using somebody else's leg up to to get your your own songwriting started. Um, I think is a really good way to go. I've done it lots and lots of times. I'm trying to do it now. It hasn't quite um, kicked in yet this time, but it's a good handy hint. So use samples. Um, my second hint is just do something. Um, don't wait for inspiration. I, I mean, this is a, an interesting one because I I don't know if inspiration is any ever a thing I wait for because I could be waiting a very long time. Um, so I think there is something to be said for, for for putting some time in every day, sticking in a you know with your routine, and sitting down and just getting something down. And if it's horrible, then then don't worry about it. Don't 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 labour it. But spend the time um, doing what you do. Uh, I've got you know, a combination of acoustic guitar, electric guitar, keyboards with different sounds on, obviously, because I can, you know, I can plug in any sound. Um, there's enough there that should that should inspire. And uh, I would say put the time in because it's not going to happen if you don't put the time in. It might happen if you do put the time in. So just stick with your routine, sit down, try and do things over and over again every single day and... At some point, it will just click back on again. I have no doubt. My third handy hint. In the absence of coming up with your own fantastic, creative uh, genius of a song, why not do a cover version? Now, I've done this quite a few times. I tend to do cover versions. Oh, look. That pullover. It's going to have to go. Um, I tend to do cover versions when I'm having a bit of a, you know, a slow time. And... So I have done a few recently, and uh, I think they're really valuable ways of keeping yourself busy, of keeping you know your your craft going. Uh, you you still have to think about how you're going to arrange this cover, how you're going to sing it, how you're going to produce it. So okay, you didn't write it, but everything else is still ticking over, and I think that's really valuable. And anyway, I think it's quite quite interesting to at some point have a little a little bank of your cover versions because they say something about you i'm sure okay so that's the third one fourth one if you're not feeling creative collaborate go and find somebody who is feeling creative um and you know that might be that might be the key um now look i i'm happy to say i work in a number of collaborations um you know particularly recently with cj and doing work with gold hawk foxes and and that is that just goes along as normal um and it's certainly worth working with somebody else when you're feeling like you know the, the, your own creative juices are not particularly flowing so definitely go and find someone else to work with somebody who may be completely oblivious to the fact that you're having a few issues getting your own thing going and just throw yourself into it immerse yourself into something quite different because when you collaborate you are you are coming up with stuff i hope that you would not be coming up with on your own because that's why you collaborate in the first place so throw commit to it throw yourself in and find a partner or two or three okay uh my fifth uh handy hint on how to deal with that fallow period is um go and find your old songs what you know songs that that 
um, are waiting to be released or even songs that you released a number of years ago that you know you could do better. Um, and go back and rework them, improve them. Um, you, you, you'll always be thinking of, you know, that song that is really good, but you just don't like the way you sung that chorus. You don't like the words in that particular verse, or uh, you really like the song, but you didn't, the production's a bit stodgy or, you know, whatever it is, go and do a reworking of your own stuff. And actually linked to that is my hint number six, which is go and plunder some old lyrics of yours. Now, look, in my situation, what quite often happens is I will write a song, write often tons of lyrics, you know, work quite hard on the lyrics, and then the song ends up being no good for a whole number of reasons. And those lyrics just, well, I, I fire them. I mean, I keep them all because I know that at some stage in the future, I might want to go back and find some lyrics and do that trick of putting those old lyrics to a new song. Or quite often what I really do is I plunder bits. I plunder bits and pieces. I plunder a verse here and there, um, you know, a couple of, a rhyming couplet that I need in here. Um, so don't be afraid to go and check out stuff that you wrote that didn't go anywhere and and take the words and put them to something completely different. That's quite a nice exercise to do because for a lot of songwriters, I think the words... Um, are more of a struggle than the music. So if you've already got some words, you're you know you're off and running. You're starting. Okay, I've got two more just to cover here. One is don't try and write suddenly now the best song you've ever written. Just don't don't um, feel that because you've had, in my case, a couple of months where nothing really has come out at all, that the only way to deal with this is to write the best thing I've ever written. Because all you're doing then is is piling on the pressure. You know, um, what I actually find is if I've had a bit of a, a gap, if I've been on holiday, if, if there's been a, an interruption to the songwriting, quite often the first thing I write after that interruption is, it's okay, it's not it's not the best and then when i get into this thing of you know one song then another another you know one song after another and it it feels really good and you definitely feel like you're in a bit of a creative on a creative roll the first one is the worst and they tend to get better actually um so don't put that pressure on that says okay right my next song has got to be really good because that could be one of the reasons why the writer's block is happening is that you're you you're raising the bar to such a point that you can't reach it. And if that's the case, that's, that's, that's silly. You know, don't worry about where the bar is. Just worry about each song as it comes along, try and make it the best it can be, and the bar will look after itself. I'm pretty certain of that. And I guess my overall, my last handy hint, and this is a bit of a wrap up of all of these, it could apply to any of these, is don't put too much pressure on yourself. So, you know, if you are doing a bit of work every day, as I said before, if you do give yourself that time to to write something and it's not really happening, or you know you're you've, you're looking for a cover version and you're worrying about that and you're continuing to improve some of your old tracks or new tracks that are yet to be released and you know you could do a better job of it, whatever you do, don't put too much pressure on yourself because I think that is. 100% counterproductive and is exactly the kind of thing that will prolong a period of kind of creative blank where nothing much is happening and you're you're struggling to think I don't you know what to write about and the tunes that you put down all sound like you did it 10 years ago etc etc it will pass the more pressure you put on yourself I think the worse so be kind um have fun with it uh muck about, give yourself the opportunity that something will come and I'm absolutely certain you'll get through it and I'm pretty certain I'll get through it. For me, the good news is that I have written a lot of songs and there's there's a lot still to be released that hasn't been released. So I know that in reality, if I didn't write another song for the next six months, it Although I don't think I'd feel good about it at all, I might be a bit more worried. We'd be, you know, I'd be talking to you about that. Um, 
it wouldn't really matter. It wouldn't matter because I could still keep up, you know, quite a consistent release schedule and nobody would ever know if I hadn't just opened my mouth and said it. Okay, so on that note, I will just say this, that next week I do have a brand new single. Um, luckily, I wrote it a year ago. Um, it's going to be called Spoil Your Vibe, and it's, um, it's, ooh, it's quite an epic. So we'll talk about that next week. And in the meantime, um, if you're struggling away at trying to come up with something, um, I'd love to know what you use for yourself to, to get the juices flowing again. And um, have a great week. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.